this is your 5 minute geography lesson. We're covering theme 6, element 7, managing water supplies. Check your uniform, I'm Mr S and I'll be your 5 minute teacher. Given the ever increasing global population and the economic development of LICs, the demand for water continues to increase and as a result there are a number of different strategies that may be deployed to increase a region's access to water. And we're going to try and split these into two different factors, one being hard strategies and one being soft strategies. So let's have a look at the hard strategies to start with. So hard strategies are ones that require a significant amount of infrastructure to be put into place and probably also cost a lot more money. So the first one we're going to have a look at are dams. So dams block the flow of a river's course and allow water to build up behind the dam to create a reservoir or a large lake. That reservoir then becomes a store of water that can be used at a given time when they may be in water shortage or used to, to supplement part of the normal flow of the river during maybe a low peak or uh, sorry a low season. The advantages of that are that you're going to have a more consistent water supply the year round. It may also generate electricity through hydroelectric, uh, hydroelectric power. It could be used for leisure activities on the lake as well. But there are significant downsides. So it is very expensive to build a dam. It can take up to 10, maybe 15 years to fully get it completed. And the reservoir might end up flooding local settlement, settlements further upstream and destroying the ecosystem of that area as well, because an entire valley would have to be flooded. You've also got to consider the fact that if there are additional settlements downstream or another country downstream, you are effectively removing part of the flow that would be utilised by that region or that country as well. And that brings us on to something called hydropolitics. The idea that there is maybe conflict or negotiation that needs to take place between different countries because of the flow, the pollution, and perhaps the blocking of rivers as they flow between countries. The second one we're going to have a look at is water transfer. And in the northeast of England, where we're based, water transfer happens all the time. We are a region of high water supply. We live in an area that gets a lot of rainfall naturally. We live close to mountains and close, close to the coast. But we've also got a couple of very large reservoirs as well, which were built for our industrial past, which aren't used for that uh, manner anymore. But further south, they're in what's called water deficit in the summer in particular. So that means they don't have enough water to meet the needs of all the population. So what we do is we've got large underground pipes that transfer water from the north further south to the areas that need it, when, but only when they actually need it, so we can turn these on and off. The same happens with South Africa and Lesotho. So Lesotho is a very high country, it's up in the mountains, it gets more natural rainfall, and it transfers water to South Africa, which is in some serious water deficit, as a physical water scarcity in a lot of the country. Now, the advantage of that is that you can earn money from transferring water. So places that have a lot of water can earn money from that. And it helps to level it out the water supply. If you've got an area that has a lot of water supply to start with. But the downside is that you have to rely on another region, which isn't always good. And they might end up in water deficit at some point. So you're both going to be in trouble. And it can be so expensive to set up the network as well. So these large underground pipes are very expensive infrastructure projects to come, uh, produce. And then finally, we have desalinization plants. So this is where they take salt water from the coast, from the sea. They use electrolysis to remove the salt. And then that seawater then becomes safe drinking water. Now, this might sound like a perfect solution to the world's water crisis. However, desaline, um, desalinization is a very expensive process and it's also got to consider the fact that it probably has a large carbon footprint because of the amount of energy required to actually produce safe water from salt water. Let's have a look at the soft strategies. We've only got two to consider and the main one of these is water conservation. So that's the idea that we try to use less water so that we can meet our needs with the current supply that we've got. So there's a couple of strategies. A lot of these are done in the home. So they're like bottom-up strategies. 
So the idea that you can replace appliances with more water efficient ones. So your toilet, any new home, is probably going to have something called a dual flush, where there's a short flush and a long flush. That saves water. You can also get energy and water saving appliances like your washing machine or your dishwasher, so it doesn't use as much water during a cycle. And in addition, a lot of people are now being encouraged to get a water meter. So in the past, homes would have a flat rate to pay for water. So it doesn't matter how much water you use, you'd pay the same amount of money. So it doesn't really encourage people to use less water. With a water meter, you pay for the amount of water that you use. So that means that residents of a home are going to be more likely to want to conserve water because it's going to save them money each month. And then the last one is the use of grey water. So grey water is untreated water. And a lot of grey water is produced in the home. So if you take a shower, if you wash the dishes, then that is gr uh, what goes down the sink is grey water. So that water can be reused. So instead of going straight down the drain into the sewer network, it may be stored in a tank. And then that can be used to flush a toilet because that water doesn't come into contact with uh, uh, a human being. It can also be used to water the garden. We can also collect rainwater in vats on the roof and then that can be used to water the garden or flush the toilet as well. And the intention is that it saves us from having to produce or treat water that's ultimately not going to be used for human consumption. Well, that's it for today. We'll continue at your revision by completing the Now Try It tasks for homework. Class dismissed.